that final verse um, supports the uh, children's sermon, doesn't it? Grant that I only you may love. Everything else could be considered garbage. And seek those things which are above. This is what we just prayed. Till I behold you face to face, O light eternal, through your grace. Amen. Which is something new. You know all about this life. You know the ins and outs of this life. You know it can be happy, joyful, there are beautiful spots, but you also know there can be sadness and tribulation and, yes, even suffering. But God promises something new, a new heaven and a new earth. We have something to look forward to. That's based on the uh, Old Testament reading uh, for this morning, Isaiah chapter 43. I'd like to start just a couple of verses early because it'll make sense um, in my uh, opening remarks. So, two verses earlier. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So God's called Lord, Redeemer, Holy One of Israel. For your sake I send Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives even the Chaldeans in the ships in which they rejoice. He's going to lay low the Chaldeans and the Babylons, not friends of the Israelites. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King, more names. The Lord calls himself wonderful names. And then the, t and then the uh, Old Testament reading uh, read earlier starts here thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea a path in the mighty waters who brings forth chariot and horse army and warrior they lie down they cannot rise they are extinguished quenched like a wick on a candle remember not the former things nor consider the things of old behold of old behold I'm doing a new thing a brand new thing and he does and we'll discuss that in just uh here in a few moments. I'd like to start by sharing with you about Uncle Ray. You heard me correctly, Uncle Ray. My mom came from a big family, so I have lots of maternal aunts and uncles. Uncle Ray is in heaven now. He lived to be about 93, spent most of his life in northeast Oklahoma, and a strong, a strong childlike faith. Remember that? He'd sign his Christmas cards. He'd always witness about the Lord, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know, I, I know Uncle Ray is in heaven because he had a simple, strong life faith. But while he was on this earth, he had this unusual, um, to me it was unusual, he had a habit. And that is he bought a new car every year. Every year when the new models came out, I think in the fall, he'd buy a new Chevy. And it was always a Chevy. He would trade in his not-so-old car in for a brand-new Chevy. He did this for 50 years. And until uh, he lost his driver's license, probably lost it in the trash can. Couldn't drive anymore, so he quit buying cars. But I remember that. And I asked myself, why did Uncle Ray buy a new car every year? Well, it couldn't be because the old car, which was 12 months old, didn't have that much mileage on it, didn't have that much wear and tear on it. So why did Uncle Ray always buy a new Chevy? I don't know. He was a, he was what, a, a classic blue-collar worker. Didn't have a lot of education. Worked in a factory, in a plant. I think they did something with paper in northeast Oklahoma where it gets dreadfully hot and humid in the summer. In the summer. And when the plant closed down in the summer, he'd go in there and clean it, which was even a more odious, distasteful job. Maybe Uncle Ray treated himself to a new Chevy every year because he just wanted to treat himself for the hard work. Maybe they got a special deal, this factory and the workers, the union that uh, I've got to believe he belonged to a union. Um, they had a special relationship with a Chevrolet dealer in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Who knows? But he'd get a brand new car. And he'd forget about the old one. 
and he would enjoy the new features of the new car. When power windows came along, he enjoyed power windows. When cruise control came along, he was the first one to enjoy cruise control. Mm -hmm. When air conditioning came along, he enjoyed air conditioning in the car. He got a brand new car. Many times I think you and I need something brand new. We're like the children of Israel. We've had blessings in the past, but we need something to freshen us up, to give us uh, inspiration for living, to give us something to look forward to, give us something to enjoy, to keep us going. We've had a lot of blessings. You've been brought into the family of God through baptism. You probably went through junior catechism or adult catechism. You learned the Ten Commandments, and, and you got to know your Bible a little bit better. You learned the creeds and so forth. And you became a, a communicant member, enjoying the sacrament of the altar. You got that blessing. Perhaps you enjoyed, a, a, you, uh, you have a pious spouse. Even though dad's gone now, you had a, you had a guy, or you had a, a wife who loved God just like you did. And you worshiped at the same altar. And God blessed you and your pious spouse with children, certainly a gift of God. Mm -hmm. And you've had your setbacks. Perhaps you got seriously ill, but with good medical care and the prayers of your family, your own prayers and the prayers of your church family, God gave you the blessing of newfound health. So it's not like you haven't had blessings in the past, but like Uncle Ray, you need something brand new. God promises that to his ancient people, Israel. Back at the time of Isaiah, they had many blessings too. In fact, God recounts those blessings. He said, remember that time you were in trouble and you were in the desert and there was a mountains to the left of you and mountains to the right of you and a big body of water called the Red Sea in front of you and you looked back behind you and your enemies were coming, Pharaoh and the cavalry. The cavalry. In ancient times, the cavalry was the most intimidating uh, ammunition you could throw at your enemies. Yesterday was the air show. Some of you maybe went out. You didn't even have to go out to the bays. They flew over town. These slick, modern jets. Hmm. They're kind of like the cavalry. They are intimidating. And God took care of his people by dividing the waters of the Red Sea. And they walked through on dry land and got to the other side. And just as they got to the other side, Pharaoh and his cavalry, his blue angels were coming into the Red Sea and God took care of that because he enveloped them with the walls of the water which he divided for his people but not for their enemies. And through the wilderness they got many blessings. Water when there was none, food when there, were, there was none, light when it was dark, hmm, cloud cover when it was hot. Sometimes many of these in miraculous ways and God gave him blessings. You know what God said? He said, you need something new. You need something new. And it's not a new car, but it's a, it's a, new, it's a new blessing of mine. And this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to release you from your exile in Babylon, send you back to your home where you will, where you will have your own towns. You'll refurbish the temple. You'll grow your families. And eventually the Savior of the world will be born amongst you, your own people, probably in a no-count town like Bethlehem. And that's what happened. They got something new. And when they got the Lord Jesus, they were happy because they knew that their job now was to tell the rest of the world. It says jackals and ostriches in there, doesn't it? It says in the wilderness there are jackals and ostriches. Jackals are like coyotes, hmm, predators. Ostriches are like owls, predators. Indifferent or different type of uh, animals, uh, not a domestic animal. Some said this would be a symbol for Gentiles. So when the Lord Jesus came and died on the cross, it was their job to share the brand new news that 
God loves the world and he washes away the sins of everybody in the world and he has created a new heaven and a new earth. Let's make this really, really relevant. Sometimes I wish I was a new person. I wish I could, I'm not talking about the outside, I'm talking about the inside. I wish I could just throw in the trash can the old Gary and be a new person. God says, I can do that for you. I can do that for you. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Go back to your baptism, Gary, and rise to newness of life. Sometimes I wish the church was a new church hmm, where we had more zeal and more love and more... I'll stop with those. God can do that. God can do that. He can create an, a, a, an established congregation like and make it us a new people. A new, new people. New leadership. In a few months, under God's blessing, you'll get a new pastor. He'll be young. He'll have eight kids. He'll grow the church like that by bringing his family. And he'll have new ideas. Are you ready for that? Something brand new. He'll have lots of energy. There's a pastor in the East Valley in Phoenix. He does all of his sermons in PowerPoint. That means when it's time for the sermon to start, they roll down, the, they descend the screen, and when he starts preaching, he has pictures in front of the congregation. That's brand new. You know, we've adopted a vision which will be read by your new pastor about your desire to be a new church. God can do that. And he will do that. Let's not fight him. And the biggest blessing, I'll close with this, the biggest blessing, a brand new thing, is heaven. A brand new creation. A brand new creation. No more fighting. No more weeping. No more suffering. No more malaise. Uh, God will give us a new heaven and a new earth. God promises that. Like Uncle Ray's car, the new upholstery, the spotless dashboard, the paint job without any chips or dents in it. Hmm. That's what Uncle Ray got. That's what you and I and the church have to look forward because in Christ, God promises all those things. Dear friends, may May the Holy Spirit. Don't forget about the past blessings. Just don't dwell on them. Look towards the future. Look towards the future because it's bright. Because brand new thing God promises and has done in his son Jesus. And in that event, he continues to generate blessing after blessing after blessing. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds. Keep your church. Keep yourself in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.